H5P plugin or embed H5P content. Or you can use H5P content and application through a page service uh, account on H5P.com. The H5P plugin offers four, over 40 plus content types to select from, and each content type has an has an example and a tutorial to help you get started. This is extremely helpful, especially if you're new to creating interactive activities and modules and you don't exactly know um, where to start or uh, where or what kind of content type that you, you'll be most interested in using. And some of these content types that are very popular include multiple choices. So again, this is great if you want to create multiple choice question type and if you want to allow your user to be able to select more than one correct answer. We have single choice sets, which um, sorry, we have quiz uh, the quiz question set, which is great if you want to create a quiz that has different types of question types. So you can add multiple choices, trues and for uh, true and false or uh, drag and drop. Another popular type is interactive video. This is probably one of our most popular interactive content type. And this is great if you want to create uh, or if you want to upload a video where you want to take breaks in between to sort of engage in uh, engagement. And course presentation is another popular one that's used often. So to create sort of smaller modules uh, of different course presentation, the larger interactive activity also will sometimes include a smaller uh, interactive activity elements as well. So for example, the course presentation will actually have interactive video embed in it. So sometimes depending on what you're trying to create, you don't have to use smaller uh, several interactive activity type, you can actually use a course presentation and then include uh, the smaller different type of interactive activities within it. Another popular one is the image hotspot and interactive book. So image hotspot is great, again, if you have an image and you want to draw attention to certain uh, features or aspect of an image. And so these examples that I've used are actually ones that um, Julia sent me that says um, people uh, you were most interested in learning about, but they also happen to actually be one of our uh, popular one too. So it kind of works hand in hand. So this then brings us to eCampus Ontario H5P Studio. So uh, our studio was actually developed by the team at Wilfrid Laurier University Library. The H5P Studio uses the H5P open source plugin to provide a one-stop shop for our member institutions who want to create interactive content for their courses or other instructional projects for free. So that would include you. And this, so this one-stop shop basically allows you to discover H5P content that you can use or modify for your teaching. You can create new H5P modules or share your modules with students either on your profile, in the H5P Studio catalog and beyond. So essentially what we've done is to create sort of a free space where you can actually create interactive activities, have your own site to host those activities that you've created and share them beyond our uh, studio. And we selected H5P because some of the things we like about it is that it's open source, it's free, is adaptable and reusable. Um, it allows you to add licensing and, and extra metadata elements, easy to share, and it's also responsive. And like anything you like, there's sometimes things that you don't like about it, but luckily there's only really two things we don't like about it, which is that it's hackable. And this just means that this is the nature of any open source type of um, activity, but it also just, sorry, any open source type of software, but it really just means that if you're creating a quiz, you just want to keep in mind that if your student or learner knows um, how to actually expose the HTML code of the web property, they'll be able to see the answer. So it's great for if you sort of want to assess, you know, engagement, right? So it's not really something we would recommend um, using to sort of test uh, your student at that level, unless you are embedded it into your um, LMS system where when it's in there, it can actually um, put, in, put in the appropriate security. The other feature we don't like about it is visual appeal. And this, if you've had the chance to actually play with the H5P content type, you will probably have 
a dislike for some of the uh, content type where you can't change the font, so you can't change the uh, graphic or the image of them to kind of blend in with your LMS system, depending on which LMS system you're using. But again, it's only two things that are not too much of a hassle, which is why, you know, it's still a great uh, type of um, interactive activity that we uh, that we've used. OK, and what's unique about H5P Studio is its catalog of H5P activity. So not only can you create activities for free, but you can search and find one to, to reuse or modify in the catalog. And even once again, share beyond uh, share beyond your own activity, share your own activity beyond your institution. So our catalog is set to public, and this just means means that <clears throat> whatever you share to the catalog is basically visible worldwide. Oh, thank you for that clarification, Julia. So yes, H5P is great for uh, formative feedback, less so for summative final assessment. That's correct. Mm -hmm. And so this is just a current stat on the H5P Studio. It was actually only created, I believe, uh, last year, March, uh, March last year, just right before uh, COVID, you know, the whole pandemic started. And but it's very, you know, great and awesome to see the growth and how much growth it's gotten. And uh, so right now we have over 3000 creators uh, and this is across all of our member institutions. We have over 20,000 H5P modules. So that's H5P activities that people have actually created. Uh, but we only have 23,000 module published to catalogs. And this just to, just to show you sort of the contrast between people, like folks are using the uh, H5P Studio for various reasons. And that reason is not always like, I'm going to create something and I'm going to create it to share, but it's more that I'm creating something to use within my course or use within my um, uh, program. But it is something that I'm definitely uh, working on creating some type of campaign to get at least 5,000 of those 20,000 to also publish to the catalog, because I think there is a, a lot of great uh, interactive activity that, you know, folks have created that are not being shared. But I think sometimes it's just reminding folks that whatever you create, add your license to it and share. Um, but up to date, 23,000 module is still, uh, 2,300 module is still great to, to be able to access. So I can pause for questions. So any questions so far about H5P, H5P Studio and the catalog? I know sometimes if it can get a little confusing between like what is the difference between H5P, H5P Studio and then the H5P plugin, especially when you either encounter H5P in a different platform. But I'm happy to answer if you have any questions about that. OK, so I'll go on and again, if you have any questions, feel free to drop it in the chat. OK, so for this section, I'm going to quickly uh, demonstrate how to create your account if you don't have one. And then I'll walk you through sort of what the user interface looks like once you've actually signed in. So once again, feel free to create your account if you haven't done so already. Okay, yeah, so when you're on the uh, main page, so h5p.studio.ecampusontario.ca, if you look to the right upper right uh, hand menu and click on register, it'll take you to the registration form and accounts are available automatically. Oh, thank you. Uh, Julie. I'll just put the registration link. So accounts are automatically available to anyone who's a, uh, part of our member institution. So you would just select your institution from here, complete the form. You'll receive a confirmation email to confirm your, uh, your account. If you encounter any issues or any trouble registering, just uh, send us an email and then we can get it sorted out. So let's say you've created your account and you sign in, so I'm just gonna... There we go. Okay, so once you create your account, you sign in, if you don't have any, if you haven't actually created any H5P content yet, this would all be blank, but essentially this is uh, sort of what the user interface will look like. So you have my content here, and this is where every content that you create will be displayed here. 
content results is still under development and it has been for a while, but I promise we are working on it. And this is essentially that if you created a quiz, any logged in user who take your quiz, the result will show here. So this is where all of the uh, attempts that folks have made, uh, students have made will show here, but they do have to be logged in in order for you to, to track it. The other uh, tab is my contribution. So this is actually where if you've collaborated with anyone, it will show here. So if I'm the main author or the main creator of the module, it will show under my content. But if I'm a contributor who's been added, I still have access to edit the content, but it will show up under my contribution. And then I'll show you how to actually add collaborators. The neat thing is you can actually collaborate with anyone across any of our member institutions. So you can collaborate with folks at uh, U of T or at uh, Seneca College. So again, it's open to anyone who has an account on, on the H5P studio. And of course, my favorite. So this is where if you see an interactive activity you like, um, you know, for various reasons, you can actually uh, favor it and it will show up here. And then you have some editing uh, ability to remove it from your favor as well. So this is pretty much the preview of your user dashboard when you've created an account and you sign in. I'm just going to go back to the. So I'll share the slide deck with uh, Julia afterwards. So that way you can, and the slide deck will actually include sort of like different uh, different images of what the interface look like. Another feature is uh, your profile. So you can update your profile if you want to. You can add an image. Uh, you can add, you know, links to your social media site. The other feature is when you sign in, you're actually able to message um, and e you're able to contact the author. So right now it doesn't show up because I'm signing as my, well, as one of our developer <laughs> currently. But I'll show you what it would look like if you've actually completed your profile. You'll see the image here and you'll see where it says contact Ramakava. So again, this is where, you know, for whatever reason, you've seen a content you want to use or you want to, um, you know, contact the creator for various reasons, you can go ahead and contact them here. And what else? Uh, yep. And then your interactive uh, content that you've created will show up here. And these are all optional. So these are um, content that you can decide whether you want them to be displayed in your profile or not. This is great if you've created multiple interactive activity and you want uh, your student to access it, but you just want to give them one endpoint URL for them to access all of your interactive activity, right? So you can just send them the URL for your profile and it would have all of your content that you've created. And yep, so I went through my dashboard. So any questions about the user interface, how to create an account or what uh, your profile look like? Okay. okay, so now comes the fun part, which is time to create. So once you've created your account, you can start creating or reusing H5P content. There are two main ways to create uh, a uh, H5P content. So you can either create a new content or you can reuse a content as long as the license permits it. But before creating your content, uh, there are certain things you just definitely want to make sure you do. So you want to check to see if your content is accessible. H5P.org has compiled a table of content available, and for each element, they've indicated if the content type is accessible, if it's being maintained by its core team, and if the content type has any known browser limitation. It's a good idea to view this table just to ensure that you know, the content type that you want to use is actually accessible, but also that you're keeping your end user in mind. I always uh, remind folks uh, not to get discouraged if, for example, you want to use uh, dictation, but it's not accessible. What this really means is that if you want to use a content type that's not accessible, you have to consider uh, providing an alternative format, you know, with your end user in mind to make sure that you know, you're also being inclusive, essentially. So that's just uh, a little food, of, a food for thought, because I know that sometimes people will stay, uh, stay away from interactive content that are not accessible. But really, it just means that if it, you know, it just means you have to consider thinking about how you're going to provide an alternative format to deliver the same type of uh, interactive activity, essentially. 
And so no matter how you create your H5P content or which content type you select, you will need to add certain required and additional details in order to save your content in the H5P editor interface. So all of these I'll go through uh, quickly, but then I'll, you'll see uh, when I go through the demo where they are and then um, how to actually enter the information for them. But you want to add details. So things like you want to add descriptive information like the title of your uh, overall um, activity, you want to select your subject. This, our subject uh, vocabulary it is under construction. So I know that, uh, like I said, we launched this last March and the increase in volume of interactive activity has basically made us realize like our subject uh, vocabulary is very limited. So we have, we're in the process of developing a more inclusive, larger uh, control vocabulary subject headings. But um, you, you want to add description, you want to select your language. So if you're creating a French uh, interactive activity, which we're always looking forward to, you can select the language type and then any keywords that you want to add to your um, interactive activity, you can do that. And then this is where you can add collaborators. So again, if you are collaborating with different users, you can add them here. You can add as many collaborators as you like. I've seen interactive content that has like 10 collaborators on it. So it's really up to you in terms of if you're working on a content with a group of people, this is where you would add them. And then content visibility. So this is where you want to select how you want your H5P content to appear. So if you're working in draft stage, you just want to make sure that work in progress is checked off. You can uncheck the rest, so showing catalog, showing profile, but it's really up to you. So there are some H5P content that are in the catalog and they're still classified as work in progress, right? I think I have two, and this just really means uh, to let the user know that if you want to reuse my content, you can go ahead, but I'm just letting you know I'm still working on it, right? Or if you're like me, sometimes you want to work in draft. You don't want anyone, anyone else to see what you're working on until you're ready. So this is really what these options are. It's just how do you want your content to be saved? And of course, metadata. So you, know, you want to add um, metadata information to your H5P content, and you want to select a license type for your content as well. So what I've done is, so H, um, the, if, so the way H5P Studio work in terms of metadata, it has sort of like a two level uh, metadata element. What this means is that for the content type itself, so whether you select a virtual tour 360 interactive video or a question set, that content type itself will have a metadata field for it. So whatever licensing you apply can apply to your interactive activity as a whole. But then there is a level two um, metadata element field, which is more for media type that you've used for which you're not the copyright holder, or maybe you want to add your own copyright information to that. And this just means that if I go or someone goes to reuse your content, if you've included those metadata detail, it will be beneficial and helpful for someone to know that, hey, I've created a 360 um, uh, interactive module that you can reuse, except the images I've actually used for this 360 are, you know, let's say Creative Commons CC, BY, and C, so non-commercial uses, and they're, this is a creator, so I'm not the creator of them. So that's just that distinction between level one and level two. And when I do a demo, I'll show you sort of um, an example of where that information will be displayed. But I always find it's, it's a good idea to just explain sort of that two level metadata information because sometimes uh, folks like sometimes when you're creating, you will add metadata license type to your interactive content, but then you may forget to actually add it for the images or videos that you've used. Okay, And then licensing options. So I we have a whole workshop on uh, Creative Commons licensing. So I won't have time or the ability to go through all of that, but I, you know, just put a slide and then I also added a link to um, that would take you to Creative Commons licenses. And also uh, I've put together sort of, it's still a work in progress, how to add a CC license to your H5P content that uh, you can check out if you want. And I would love feedback because it's still in work in progress. It's also one of those meta, I guess, 
um, element that I was trying out where it's about H5P and I'm using an H5P interactive activity to create it, but I'm not sure I actually like it. So always uh, welcome for feedback on that. But essentially, you have the option of selecting a uh, different license type. The default license in H5P Studio is undisclosed. And that is that U symbol that shows up, and it shows up on a lot of our interactive activity. And part of that is, um, is because now we're building sort of that documentation to explain what you actually mean, but also because I think oftentimes people just forget to add the licensing type to their content, or they forget that they actually can add a licensing option to their content. But undisclosed essentially just means that no specific license has been applied to this particular H5P activity. This could be for many reasons. Because of the sharing and reusing nature of H5P content, you can reuse a content for which you are not the copyright holder, right? But you can also reuse it and share it without actually making any changes to it. So the option to um, have uh, content that's undisclosed is, is fine because it just means that I'm using it, I'm not making any changes to it, but I want to have a copy of it in case the you know creator make changes to the current one, right? So that's an example of where you may want to have undisclosed uh, as a licensing option. But again, if you create your own, if you adapt or remix an existing one, remember to select a license type uh, for it. So Creative Commons, it can range from the most, um, the, the least restrictive, which means CC BY, anyone can use it as long as you give me attribution and you can use it for any purposes, all the way down to basically the most sort of uh, restrictive, but just slightly under copyrighted material, which means you can use it and share it, but that's all you can do. So you can't make any changes to it. Um, or if you do make changes to it, you can't share that changes under the recent uh, 4.0 version. So again, I've included the link to Creative Commons uh, licenses. It's worth checking out and worth reading to just get a sense of like how you want um, others to share your work. And that's the way I always frame the question is really, how do you want others to use your work? And that's And if you put that question in your mind, that can help you decide which license type to select. And you can uh, ultimately just add public domain. So that's another option as well. Okay, so once you sort of, you know, pick your licenses, you add your detail, you want to decide, um, you know, how you want others to use your, uh, to reuse your content. So you can e enable the ability for others to reuse your content so they can download it, they can copy it. And when you do that, you also want to make sure that you click the uh, copyright button because that's the button that will actually display the rights of use at the bottom of, of the activity. And this rights of use is where all of that licensing information that you've provided, you've selected will be displayed. And this is how others will know, yes, I can reuse this content, but under these permission. So that's always something that sometimes I think people uncheck by accident not realizing that you want to actually make sure that copyright button is checked, especially if you are saying that, yes, you can download or you can copy my content. OK, so I know that was a lot of uh, information. So again, if you have questions about any of those, just uh, feel free to drop it in the chat. So now, as I've mentioned, uh, there are two ways to create H5P content. And so essentially you can, you know, you can either either create a new content or you can reuse an existing content. So I'm going to demo multiple choice. And on the slide deck, I've included a tutorial video and also an example of a multiple choice that's going to be a lot more fancier and nicer than the demo I'll be doing uh, just for time. But essentially, this is what we want to get. So this is the what an example of a multiple choice will look like. And this is what students or anyone who's taking your quiz will see. So how do we get there? Okay, so I think I, I see a question that says, can you create content in a language other than English? Yes, so you can actually create content in French and you can essentially you can create it in almost almost any language you want. And there is an option for um, the ability to actually translate 
the buttons that are in it. So when I do the demo, I'll show you where you would go to sort of translate sort of the directional button when you're creating your content. And we also encourage and would love to have more content in French or of any other language other than English. So yes. Okay, so when you're in your account to create, so what you want to do is essentially click on create, which is located on the upper right menu. So when you click on create, it will take you to the uh, H5P editor interface. So this is what it looks like. So as you can see on the left hand side, I all the stuff that I've talked about, which is sort of like the required details that is kind of outside of H5P content itself, but part of the studio in order to save your work in the studio. So this is all of it here. So we can begin by adding our title. So we're just going to call it MC demo, MC for multiple choice, and then we can select our subject. So we'll just say this is reference. And again, so language is here. So right now we only have English and French. This again will be updating as well. And if we have a description, we can add it. We can say a demo of multiple choice. And then any keywords we want to add. If I was working with someone else, I can add them here. So let's see. Uh, I believe Julie is here, so we can add her. So if I add her and save, this demo will show up on her profile. But I won't do that. <laughs> and just in case you have a million HIP content type already. But this is where you can add uh, your contributors. Again, you can add multiple contributors. So I think I can actually add myself. You just have to remember what username I actually picked for myself. Oh, nope. Oh. So it helps to remember the username. And I can't seem to remember my own username because I'm always using the test. Uh, Author. Let's see. Okay. All right. I'll add you there. <laughs> I only have about five in my my, <laughs> my profile, so. so perfect. So this is where I can add her here. So you definitely do want to know the username. Sometimes when you start typing, it will populate the um, you know the username coming up. But apparently, I can't remember my own username account because I think I picked a pretty fancy one. Uh, yep, so once we, and again, this is where you sort of want to say, how do you want to save your work? For now, we're just going to say work in progress. And then, yep, we can say show in profile. So this is where you select your content type. So if you're creating for new, so you'll see the option here. So you just want to make sure that's checked. You can search for the content type because, again, there's about 45 different types. So instead of scrolling down, you can search if you know the title or you know, we can scroll down. So let's see what the choice is. As you can see, there's a lot to go through. And I missed it, so I'm going to search for it. There we go. <laughs> so um, again, if you're new to H5P Studio, the nice thing about H5P itself is the fact that it offers, um, so when you click on use, it'll give you the option to view a tutorial or example. This is extremely beneficial. Again, if you're new, you're not sure how to do it or what you're trying to create, this is what, uh, if you click on them, it will take you, so I'll just show you what those actually page look like. So this will take you to h5p.org. So you'll see that they've created a demo of multiple choice here. And, then, and this is a tutorial that walks you through the step of how to create that demo example that they have. So all the steps are here that I'm going to walk you through. Okay. So what we want to do is enter our title first. So we're going to call this MC demo because I'm not that creative right now. And this is where you want to enter your metadata. So if you click on metadata, we can, you can apply your license to it. And again, part of I, I believe my theory is that why a lot of the content is always you is because it's so small. And it is something that I definitely have on our H5P Studio enhancement list is how to make this metadata button larger so that uh, it's very obvious, very easy to find. But we can make this uh, CCBY. And there's extra fields that you can enter. So if you have any other additional information you want to add about the license, you can do that here. Um, any change log. So again, if you make changes that you want to um, add that information, 
any additional information. Sometimes this is handy if you're using maybe copyrighted work where you know permission was granted, right? Or you're creating content where it was part of a funding project or something like that. So I've seen these space used for multiple variety of reasons. That's not always like for licensing. So, but it's there if you need to include additional information. And again, if you have a separate author, so maybe let's say. Here I can put myself this time. I'm the author, or let's say I'm the editor. So we can say save, and that will show up on the content itself. So you want to click on save. So to create multiple choice question, essentially you just create your question. Most of H5P like um, editor interface is pretty directional. So a lot of them will actually walk you through the step. They'll either have numbering, so you know, step one, step two, step three. I find the easiest thing is to is to just you know go slowly through the activity and the different fields and just look at the title. And again, if you get stuck, you could always look at the tutorial to see how to create one. But I believe my question was, um, what does Okay, so this is where you can enter your question. So as I've mentioned about the uh, visible appeal, as you can see, this is pretty much most of all you have in a text field. So there's not a lot of options or feature. We can make this bolded, we can italicize, uh, we can change maybe the size of um, uh, the font, but sorry, uh, the font, but that's about it. So there's not really a lot of options when it comes to being able to actually edit the text. So then here you can add your uh, answers. So we can say the first one is, so this is not the correct answer. So we won't check that. So we can enter our next one. So we can say, this is the correct answer. So we can check so this is where if you wanted to add more uh, options to show up, then you would just click on add options and you can keep adding as many as you need to. But of course, generally I find three to four is a good um, uh, selection to pick from. And then the last one, something wild here. And the other feature, if you notice, is that at the bottom of each option, there's a tips and feedback. This is where if you wanted to add a message, so for example, if someone click open educational revenue for what is OER, we can say, um, you know, sorry, wrong answer, try again, but we won't do that. For the correct answer, so if you wanted to, you can just provide feedback for the correct answer. Or if they select the wrong answer, you can add a tip saying close, but not close enough. So we can say, uh, let's see. So message display if answer is selected. Great job. Again, these are all optional field and it's provided for each um, option that you add. The nice, fe the nice thing about multiple choice is that you can have more than one answer. So some of the question type set, you'll notice that if you ever try to create them, some of them is only one correct answer. So this is great if you're trying to create a quiz where you know there's going to be multiple answers, then you definitely want to select multiple choice. And this is where, um, again, overall feedback, if you need to distribute um, feedback for different percentage uh, range. So if someone gets, let's say, maybe 50%, you can go ahead and add a message, sort of like a feedback here. There is the behavior setting. And this is where, do you, wanna, do you want to allow retry? Do you want to show solution? So these are all just different settings that you can select from. The question type just means, you know, do you want to show multiple checkboxes or a single choice? So we'll go with single choice. So I like the uh, radio buttons, but this is a preference. And then what else? Uh, so yeah, if you want your answers to, uh, the answers to be randomized, you can do that. So it doesn't display the way it's showing up. But also if I were to retry the quiz, if I got it wrong, then it will randomize the answer as well. So same thing, require solution before the answer, sorry, require answer before the solution can be viewed. And then you can add a percentage. I mean, this doesn't count because I've only created one question, <laughs> but ultimately if you're adding multiple, then this is something that you may want to change. 
So here we have text overrides and translation. So for example, this is where if you're creating an interactive activity in a different language, here there's actually more option, but let's say you were creating something in French, right? So that it will change sort of the language and the stuff to French uh, to be displayed. So then if we go here, this is where you can add um, sort of correct the uh, the directional button, right? So you can change your um, if, uh, your text here, and this is where it shows. So it doesn't change all of the layout interface into French, but this is where you would have to actually, <clears throat> excuse me, change the, uh, change the translation here. I'm going to set this back to English. And confirm, yes. There we go. And then, so again, at the bottom, uh, we want to enable copyright because I want others to reuse this content, but I want them to know how. If you wanted to, you can disable the embed button, but generally that uh, is usually there. And it's really up to you. So for example, I always say, pick uh, this based on the appropriateness of your license type. So if you select, let's say, a, um, a CC, BY, NC, ND, so non-derivative, right? Then really you don't need to allow others to download or copy your content, but you can and you should. I, I think you should. But generally, I always remind people like if you generally it's the other way around. So if you select a license that's CCBY, then allow the option for others to download or reuse your content. Cause then that's really keeping within the spirit of the license type. Because oftentimes there are some content where it is CCBY, but you can't, there's nowhere to actually download or copy the content to remix it or adapt it. Uh, so I always say just keep that in mind. And then, yep, so I think we have everything we need for this quiz. So then if we save, and hopefully my internet will speed up. Yep, so this is what the quiz looks like. My one question, multiple choice quiz. And then, so this is, if I come as a student, this is what I would see. And then I can interact with the quiz. So what does OER stand for? I can say it, open educational resources. So if I check that, so check the answer, and then we'll see that I did great. And you'll see the actual feedback. It says, great job. And again, if I had picked a wrong answer, I didn't provide the feedback for wrong answer, but you can you know, put that comment there or put that link, uh, sorry, that hint there, and this is where it will show. And this is where you'll see, you know, the reuse option. So we can download this, we can copy it, rights of use. So this is where the licensing information will show up and it's hyperlink. So it will take me to Creative Commons if I'm not sure what this licensing mean. And then it will take me to the uh, right section and I can read the uh, detail about what I can do under this uh, Creative Commons license. And what else? And of course, embed. So if you want to embed it um, elsewhere, you can copy the embed iframe code from here. Yeah. Yep. So that is pretty much an example, uh, a demo of creating content from scratch, selecting a content, and you know just creating your on your own. The next one I'm going to demo is how to, if you want to reuse H5P content. So from my demo, you saw the option to download as a .h5p file or to copy content. So these options are very selective and it's based on the creator. So sometimes you'll see that uh, folks may actually allow you to download it, but you can't copy it. That's a very uh, selective choice. So it's just up to you on whether you wanna make both available or just allow one on your own activity. But essentially you can search through the uh, catalog to see if there's any content you can reuse or modify. You can also search other sites that has H5P content. So as long as it's .h5p file, you can download it and upload it here as well. Again, if you're using uh, reusing a content, you just want to make sure that you take a look at rights of use, just to make sure that you're using it in the way that the license permits it. So it's just always a good reminder. And what I would say is the question I generally get is about uh, content that are licensed with you. So I always say anytime you see content with you, we always recommend reaching out to the creator to ask them and just say, hey, um, you know, this content is I can download or reuse this content, but it's licensed with you. You know, 
can I do it? Do you want to maybe change the license type to something so that others know? So it's always a good reminder because I think I truly believe it's only because the metadata field is just so tiny in the editing interface that oftentimes uh, folks just don't know it's there or they just don't know they can actually add a license type to their content. Okay, so I would demo reusing a content uh, using the interactive video, which is always fun. This uh, reusing content is actually one of the best way if you want to use. So oh, sorry. If you want to reuse a content or if you want to try out a new interactive content type that you're not sure about, it looks a little bit more complex. So something like brunch and scenario, for example, uh, 360 uh, virtual tour, uh, course presentation. I always recommend going through the catalog, see what you can reuse to just get a preview of the um, editing interface. Because sometimes when you actually see how things are built from the back end, it will help kind of uh, make, the, uh, make the picture connect in terms of how to actually put it together or how things are supposed to look. So I know like personally, when I started playing with the branching scenario, I had a hard time like creating it from scratch. So I actually went, found one and I looked at it from the back end and it was just like, oh, okay, I totally get it. So that's always a tip I give is whenever you see one, just reuse the content, copy it, download it, look at it from the editor interface, just see how the person actually put it together in order to create your own. So we're going to reuse this video. This video was actually created by um, Dorina Gorso from uh, Conestoga College, and it just looked like a pretty fun video that I had no idea what it's about. But again, so we're going to check for uh, rights of use. So it says a CC uh, uh, BY, which is perfect. So we're just going to reuse. Now, if you want to reuse content, you can copy the content or download. So I'm going to copy because copying is always easier. Whenever that option is available, that's the option you want to go with. So we're going to go back to create again. It's going to take us back to the same interface we were at. This time, we're going to look at upload or paste. So we'll see that the paste button is actually highlighted in blue. And it's because it recognized that I've actually copied an H5P content. So if I go paste, this is like my favorite thing, is when you just paste it and it automatically uh, copy over everything from the interactive content. So yep. so now you'll see that it pasted its interactive video on the top. Uh, we don't have to do anything else. So what we want to do now is again add our descriptive information so we can say uh demo of news, something like that and then what else? so work in progress that's fine so as i was saying um again if you're new to sort of a, a content type that looks a little bit more complex by reusing it, you get to see it from the back end. So even if you're not actually using it, but getting a preview of what it looks like from the back end is helpful. But interactive video, essentially, like I said, you have step one, step two, step three. So most of all the interactive activities are very directional and will walk you through the step. So here we've uh, the video that was used in that uh, interactive video is already here. If we wanted to, for whatever reason, if they don't have the actual um, copyright um, metadata, like license information, we can actually update it here. And this is why I was saying like um, having that metadata information and licensing information is very important because this will let us know if we're using an interactive content that has a video that maybe is all rights reserved. So it just means that it just makes us consider it differently, right? So maybe we're going to use it under fair dealing or uh, maybe we won't use it under non-commercial. Like, it's just a good idea to let the uh, downstreamer or reuser know that this video belongs to you know, this person and give the attribution. But if we go to step two, so this is where the interactive video is. So I won't go through all of the step, but this is how you basically get to see what interactive video looks like from the back end. You have the video here. All of these and people expect oops, features oops, such. There we go. All of these sort of uh, bubbles here, little circle, are indication of interactive element. So with the interactive video, you can add different types of uh, H5P. So you can add uh, statements, single choice sets, 
multiple choice that we've added. So if we wanted to, we can actually add our H5P, uh, sorry, our what is OER here. The other feature is this. So when you're within H5P content, right, you'll see that there's copy and there's paste. So if we wanted to, we can go copy and then paste. Oh, sorry. I did this wrong. This is actually an interactive, uh, no, uh, interactive book is the one where it will, and course presentation is the one that it will allow you to actually copy smaller interactive activities into a larger one on different slides. But this is where, you know, if you wanted to create multiple choice, we can do that here. The tricky part about interactive video is the timing. That's the part where I think a lot of time people have trouble with is just figuring out where you want your interactive activity to start and end, because everything is counted in millisecond, and whether you want the video to pause, which I highly recommend, and whether you want it to be a button or a poster. A button means that the person has to click on it. Poster means it will show up, it will pop up and show up. So that's really what those uh, two are. So again, if we added multiple choice here, we have an option to add metadata. So maybe we're using this uh, interactive video, but maybe we found some multiple choice question from another creator that we want to add here. So this is where you can add multiple interactive elements from different uh, sources. And then again, you'll see that it looks pretty much the same. So then we can go done. And this is, um, again, the hand uh, button. What else is neat? So yeah, there's a lot to go over like interactive uh, video. Like I think I've done a demo of just one hour of interactive video, but this is just a step to show you sort of if you were to copy interactive video. So we're gonna go save. Wait for it to save. It's taking a sweet time. While this uh, video is saving, because that's always the uh, tricky thing about doing a live demo, <laughs> is cumbersome based on your speed. But let's see. Come on, you can do it. Okay, so while that's saving, I will go through the slide deck. So we're not waiting, depending on how long it takes to save. But essentially, uh, once you've created your content, so whether you've created from scratch or you're reusing content, you have different ways of sharing your uh, H5P content. So some of these ways can include, uh, you can link to or direct user to your content page or profile. So if we go back, I think it's- Hello favorite. everyone, welcome oh, to visit. Sorry, I thought I turned this off again. There we go. So this is my reuse of this interactive video. Um, so if we go down, we'll see that now uh, Mohammed is actually the author, but essentially, and we'll see where we added our own sort of metadata element field, and it is giving it a new H5P ID. So if I wanted to share this content, I can, you know, use a URL and share just the URL and allow um, students to access it from here. I can add it to my profile. And I, I think I forgot to add it to my profile, but my multiple choice demo is here. So I can use the URL of my profile and direct my, um, you know, um, direct colleagues and students here. Another thing you can do is embed the embed feature, right? So you can embed, um, let's see. So my language is currently in French because sometimes my oh I should have mentioned that actually you can change the interactive uh, sorry you can change the interface into French as well so most of all of our platform is English and French so you can change it to French so this is where the uh, embed feature is so we can copy this and if we wanted to show or change the table tally we can do that and then you know we can copy the uh, the full uh, events um, element but the iframe is here. And I believe um, Julia did confirm that you can embed uh, H5P in Sakai, so it does work for your LMS. And this is uh, where you would do it. So once you've created your content, you will come, click on embed, and then copy the iframe, and then you can use that. It also depends on whether you have H5P plugin as well in Sakai, so I'm not sure if you actually have it at Brock. But if you did, you can also download the H5P file and then upload that as well. Um, you can also 
up, download and upload your file or even copy and paste into Pressbook as well. So Pressbook does have H5P plugin, but we always encourage people to create uh, no plugin. Okay, yeah, so if there's no plugin, then you would just use the embed feature, which to me sometimes makes it a little bit easier as well to use. But uh, yeah, so H5P has uh, Pressbooks, uh, sorry, yeah, Pressbook has H5P plugin. So if you were creating sort of, let's say, uh, a book shell there or a module shell there, and you want to have interactive activities, you can create them in Pressbook as well, or you can create them in the studio and then copy it over to Pressbook. We generally just say, if you're just creating H5P content, then use the studio. And that's actually why it was created, was that we found that a lot of uh, H5P were getting created in Pressbook, which also use up storage, because if you think about it, we have over 20,000 H5P modules. And some of those modules are large video, like interactive videos that have been uploaded. So Pressbook could not support that. And I think the uh, maximum upload is like 25 megabytes. So we had to, uh, sorry, 20, yeah, 25 megabytes. So we had to move it over to, and create our own essentially. And what else? So of course you can include your content in the catalog page. So that's always uh, helpful and great to do. So if you created your own, apply a license and add it to the catalog so others can access it and reuse it as well. And so all of that to say, I know it's a lot of information that I've gone over and covered, but we're also here to provide support. So if you have any technical issues uh, while creating your content in our studio, we are here to help you. If you have any recommendations, suggestions, we are open to them because like I said, we're planning sort of a enhancement revamp of the studio because it really has grown more expression. It has grown faster <laughs> than we can actually keep up with it. So we are always happy to enable, you know, certain features if we can. I think recently you're now able to sort your content by, let me see. Mm -hmm. So if you go to dashboard, see if my content, okay, good, it's back to English. So my content, so as you can see, if you are someone who have a lot of interactive content, which it exists where you actually end up having multiple pages, apparently, then you now can sort by title to just make it easier. So this was actually a request that came through uh, from several people. So we were able to accommodate that. So we welcome any, you know, improvement, and things like that. So you can send them all to open at ecampusontario.ca or to myself, uh, rkabademanin at ecampusontario.ca. And then finally, that concludes the workshop demo presentation, <laughs> all rolling to one. Um, happy to answer any questions anyone has. Here, I'll stop sharing.